Welcome back, my fellow agents. It is I, your, oh, extraterrestrial intelligence. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, but we'll go with it. It is X7, the host of Zenorama, the podcast of heroes and monsters. Today, we're going to be talking about the second uh, Starman movie called Attack from Space. Oops, let's do this. Pipe it down a little bit here so I can talk over it. This one is called Attack from Space. It is made up of Supergiant 3 and 4, which are called... Number Part 3 was Supergiant, the Mysterious Spaceman's Demonic Castle. And 4 was Supergiant, Earth on the Verge of Destruction. So they were both about 40 minutes, oh, 150 minutes, so 80 minutes or so, maybe almost 90 minutes. And here is the same footage from the first one. Which is still really cool. Men of the planet Ulama, deep in the Marfet galaxy, are planning to attack and destroy Earth. The, those darn salamander men from Kulaman. The K, uh, Kapia Seijin are based on the Kappa, uh, mythical Japanese creatures called Kappa, which are water imps. And you've seen them a lot in the yokai movies. They're very popular. We're still going to go through all of this stuff from the same one because it's such great footage. I mean, we didn't know at the time that none of the other... This only appeared in the very first Supergiant movie, but everybody just loved it. Or they thought it was great. And it's a great introduction. And I swear those are Pyrus Agent right and there. In order to save themselves, they must save Earth from the impending Kulamonian invasion. Yeah, and Kulamonians... This was uh, originally released uh, in August 13th, 1957, and October 1st, 1957 in Japan. And then Walter Manley, of course, released them all together, all, all four movies uh, in 1964, unleashed them upon the States. I believe that uh, Prince of Space and the Invasion of the Neptune Men were probably all in the same, same package. They were all dubbed by the by Titra. Titra. It enables its wearer to do three things: to fly through space, mm -hmm. to detect radio I love the globe meter, and to speak and understand every language on the planet Earth. I want one of those. Finally, this great forum of the Emerald Hierarchy reaches a decision. There he is. In order to save Earth from the Kulamonian attack, they must once more present the globe meter to one of their fellow creatures and send him to Earth. He is the creature made of the strongest steel. The creature who can disguise himself as an earthling. He is the creature known as Starman. Starman across the universe. All right. While we're looking at this cargo plane, well, let's just uh, mute this a bit. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, vote in the poll if you want to. Hopefully this will be on YouTube and only in one part. It runs uh, 87 minutes. No. Yeah, 77 minutes. So it's not that long. They look like nothing we see on Earth. Now they didn't respond to our radio signals either. That's right. There's a bit of talking going on here. They estimate that their last course is this direction. We're going to go. We're going to skip ahead a bit. And yes, this did come from YouTube, so it doesn't always. It can look a little pixelated here and there, so I apologize if, about that. But for some reason, oh, this is a great shot here. There's your salamander man. <laughs> Professor, you will not stop the salamanders of Kulaman. We'll destroy your race and rebuild Earth for our own uses. Man will die. Our murderous virus is spreading. In a month, it will be everywhere. Scientists mustn't get a chance to counteract the germ. <laughs> There's an evil laugh for you. He's not even snidely whiplash. A nice bit of makeup there. I mean, obviously, this is, you know, 57 and very early on um, from, I mean, Super Starman was the first cinematic superhero. The effects have improved a bit from the first two movies, or from there for from Atomic Rulers of the World, which is a nice. It's not a bad thing at all. So, um, let's, well, I don't know. We want to scoot ahead, or should I just jibber jabber over it? 
Oh, there's a nice effect ruined by the pixelation. And look, it's Starman. Starman reaches the outer rim of our solar system, flying at the speed of light past Pluto and Neptune, as Professor Asayama falls under the power of the Kulamoni. So the speed of light, but in outer space there's no wind. <laughs> I mean, you know, kids are watching this for the most part. Although I'll tell you, when we see some of these other shots here, that if any this was anything but a superhero movie, uh, people would have been raving about how surrealistic it is. Oh. Judo! Oh, Starman was about to, was approaching know. Earth. Do you know where Father is? He likes to walk. He must be in the garden. Let me go and take a look. I'll go with you. Okay. <laughs> I wonder why she wants to go with him. All right, there's more jibber jabber here for. Another. There we go. Blood I see on your hands. What have you done tonight? Answer me. <laughs> they must have really enjoyed dubbing these movies because they got to be so over the top. And Starman is so stoic. Here's our first fight scene. Ten minutes in. Eleven minutes in. Starman must take great care to avoid the Kulamonian's deadly claws, which can destroy even solid steel. And as we know, Starman is made of the, the strongest steel. I like how he just transforms. It's into his... It's, look at how cinema... I mean, this is very artistic. Once again, if this had not been a superhero movie, the critics would rave about how surrealistic this is with these flips and jumps. Looks like modern wrestling, doesn't it? So we're just, you know, have a little taste here of this. And uh, because it's, you know, very innov it's innovative, but it's uh, the director here um, by Teru Ishii um, really did a great job. It's He's got interesting cameras, angles, and especially when we get to <laughs> later on here. I mean, they didn't just do, because he couldn't fight him. He didn't punch him, but I mean, at least so far. And, you know, they're limited on effects, so they have to keep the audience entertained. Now, that is probably uh, Ken Itsui's stunt double flipping about like that. I mean, you can obviously see, even in this faded print, you can tell that's not Ken doing most of the fighting. Except for the close-ups. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. Why I oughta... There's, there's a better shot of his laser breathing breath or whatever you want to call it. Can't hurt. You letting him go there, Starman? Maybe he blew up. So we get a little more of this for quite a while. I mean, not the fight, but we got some other stuff going on here. High decibel sound waves that destroy vital tissues in health. That's their, the, first the salamanders. Um, they're poisoning people with their breath. And now they're using ultrasonics to damage kids. You should have just let him listen to modern music. I sound like a grumpy old man. In my day, we didn't have music. We just had to bang rocks together and we loved it. Every generation hates the previous generation's music or and the next generation's music. They only like their music. I know, that's a big generality. Now, that was a really nice shot there. And this is really cool. This is Dynamation right here. Starman seeks out the source of the deadly sound. I really, I mean, definitely they've worked a bit more. Now, that's, this. they have some shots right out of Lydecker Brothers, too. This is obviously superimposed. Um, but Ken's in good shape and holding himself... I don't think he's on, he's not on a board or anything like George Reeves did occasionally, but he's probably suspended and you can't do that without being strong and having some physical strength inside you. 
And here's our um, apple pie. Maybe the Kula, 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 Kulamonians were responsible for Gulala, from the, as in the X from outer space. So definitely, the, I think that the effects here have kicked up a notch. Um, just because they're, they, they look like they've improved quite a bit to me. Now, they're not great. I mean, in this day and age, uh, we'll see later on <laughs> that they're still very much. I mean, they're there. Look at this is the Lydecker brothers here. Tell me that's not Lydecker inspired. The two models flying around, chasing each other. It's well done. But, you know, this is just a lighted pie plate, right? I don't know if we see Starman does have a beam that he shoots from his little antenna from the top every once in a while, but I don't know if it's in this movie or not. All right, so this ha this goes on for quite a while. Yeah. And he finally destroys the saucer. So we're going to go here to... Oh, there's a laser. Laser. We're going to skip to 2112, and I don't mean the the Rush album. Here's a shot of the virus that's poisoning everyone, except for our heroes. And Here's an ex explanation. One fact has become apparent lately. Those affected most seriously by the disease seem to have attended a performance at the Yamano Theater. They are struck almost immediately after seeing the show. You can see here what I mean. Spike. We just completed a check of the theater this morning. They should probably inject bleach into themselves. Here, but I don't know it's fair okay. Now, these shots are so surrealistic. If this was not, if this was in um, any other movie than a suit, if it was in a spy movie or a romance, they'd be comparing it to, uh, um, I <laughs> had this, you know, uh, the guy that did Beauty and the Beast, and I'm drawing a blank, so I'm going to draw. I can't believe that I had this, and I should have written it down. From, you know, 41. Or 46, pardon me. Well, you watch that. Um, Jacques, uh, Jacques, Jean, Jacques, Cocteau is his name. Jean Cocteau. Tell me that these are would not... They would be raving about this and how surrealistic and impossible it looks and how artistic it was. But because it's a superhero movie and a Japanese superhero movie at that, no, they're just going to relegate it. But it's just, I find it uh, oddly, it's very hypnotic. And this goes on for a while. And this is just, there's a packed audience here. But they're all getting infected because these are salamander salamander men and they're breathing out dangerous pathogens. So people should be masked up. But even Starman doesn't wear a mask. But I don't think he can breathe in space. I just don't think he needs to breathe. So this goes on for a while. A while. And when I say a while, I mean like a while. So we're going to uh, time travel here about... This many minutes. Very well, sir. The troupe will perform a special dance just for you. A preview of tonight's show. Well, we know what's about to happen. So that is Starman there. He's, he's the only person in the audience. So even this is surreal because, you know, a one person, you know, doing this. Look at this background here. It's really, uh, really well thought out. And these people don't kill. They're all on the stage at the same time and not killing themselves. And they had, I mean, these are obviously a dance troupe that can do all this stuff. And they were probably in the Salamander Man costumes. So, uh, and probably one of them was also Ken's stunt double. Would not surprise me. He's just so stoic. Nothing phases him. He, I mean, we know he likes, you know, people. I mean, he smiles and laughs, but is that just a programmed response? Is he a robot? Is he an android? Is he living metal? We just don't ever know. Yeah, tell me. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm just sure that that film snobs, if Starman were not in this and they changed into, you know, fish-headed creatures or, you know, somebody's on the, on the 
Acid Trip. If this movie get raved about. I mean, but then it's got, you know, the special the 1957 special effects that just Judo, judo. There are plenty of fight scenes. I mean, but this is only the second one that we see him in. So, you know, this is uh, probably pretty close. As, what are we now? About 36 minutes into this movie out of, uh, out of 78. So, you know, we're not quite halfway through, but we're probably pretty close to the first half. And then they just show up. This is, you know, really well done. And these are all single shots. Obviously, I mean, the camera hasn't cut yet. It cut when he jumped up to the balcony. But it zoomed back down, so obviously that wasn't him. <laughs> I mean, when you look at it, <laughs> the fact that it's this, uh, you know, these Starman movies are still talked about. Uh, I know that Ken didn't care for them much simply because, you know, he kept having to pad certain parts of his anatomy. According to him, now that may be very, uh, what's the word I say? Um, they say that it's something that we're, we're never going to be able to ascertain. But look at that. <laughs> it's very acrobatic. I mean, later on they would have them bouncing. He would have been bouncing off of uh, mini trampolines. That was very common in the 60s in Japanese movies especially uh, the samurai ones. And some of the Chinese, the Shaw brothers, would adapt that every so often, but not too much. Uh, you can see it in the uh, One-Armed Swordsman from 1967. Look at this. What kind of weapons are you developing? We demand an answer. You better speak. We know that you have a secret arsenal, that you are working on secret weapons with which you plan to destroy us. This even the sets are just, they're minimalist, but they are they do, they accomplish what they need to do. And that's pretty much all you can ask for in a movie like this. All right. I'm going to go ahead here about this far. Diddly, diddly. With our plan. But even he does not know of our base here. And there is no way that he can discover we are about to begin our final attack. I propose contacting our spaceships and beginning the attack. Immediately. Wait, not yet. Remember, they are developing some weapons to be used against us, and so first we must locate their secret arsenal and be certain it's destroyed. I agree. We will have very little opposition once the arsenal is destroyed. And then what? We take over the Earth! Aye, aye. The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Deep within Earth's secret arsenal. Gentlemen, our time is running out. So Titra did do the voices, and you can tell, you can hear all the, with their faux Japanese accents that, you know, we just grew up listening to. Now, like, to newer viewers, this might sound very odd, but because, you know, it's a little stereotypical, yes, we'll admit it. All right, we're going to skip ahead again here in about six more minutes. Mm, yeah, that'll do. Uh, the little girl's being menaced by a witch. Dun, dun, dun. A salamandra. And she can move, too. It would have been cool if she'd have gotten on that cane and flew. Or shepherd's cane. Is that what they call those? But that's why you don't get up in the middle of the night. You always check for monsters. She's ostensibly the hero. Uh, Starman always gives a child a way to contact him, and it's a crystal ball of some kind of small crystal, but it can only be used once. But it'll also let him know when her father is the one that got kidnapped. I don't know which child this is. It just doesn't say. It's hard to find out hard information. Augie's not here for me to ask. That's the... Venerable August Dragoni. And I, you know, he's busy doing stuff. Yeah. She's a good little actress. I mean, she looks scared. There's a witch coming after her, and, you know, not Glinda the Good, or even 
uh, the Wicked Witch of the well, it's not it's not Margaret Hamilton or Witchy Poo, Billy Hayes. Do we have a bed? Yeah, there's a bed. So they do let her in. We're gonna go a little further here, about to there. See, and the witch gets in too. See, this, this is really a great shot too. It's menacing. Oh, look, she's got the same breath. Boy, that zapped both of them. So one of the things that uh, they're trying to, this earth scientists are trying to do is counteract the uh, the pathogen that these salamanders are spreading across. I mean, the Japanese had witches, and they're very, some of them are very much, but evil ones anyway. They had good witches too, Sally the Witch, uh, for those that wanted to watch 180 episodes or whatever that is. I tapped out after about five. Just not my demographic. Uh-oh. She got sprayed by something. This is very important. That ray, it must be a mind control ray rather than her pathogen. Oh, what a world, what a world. My beauty, my beautiful evil. Some villains do uh, suffer terrible, terrible deaths in these movies. But yeah, she's done. They accidentally found a, a weapon to use against them. That's some pretty great makeup. I mean, half a skeleton salamander face, really. You know, salamanders are frogs. And, uh, you know, there's a, an agent who loves her frogs. I don't think she's a frog. But I'm melting, melting. Oh, what a world. What a world. Ew. And it's gross, too. That's how you can tell she's really evil. Poison we have developed tonight will kill not only marine animals but all Kulamonians. Doctor, we've made the discovery none too soon. That's right. Oh, uh, we must best produce it. Beginning tonight, the armies must be supplied. Gentlemen, let's begin immediately. Yes, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Hmm, where are we here? Oh, we just got through that part. Uh, I've ordered it. However, right. one ingredient won't be here for a few days. Where do you want to go? Yeah. We'll go a little further here and get the pixelation out of the way. Ooh, some nice explosions, miniatures. Now, this might very well have been borrowed footage. Look at this. Now, that's a great shot of him flying. Starman flies to the defense. This you can kind of see. You know, obviously, he's being... Wasted by his own petard, unitard, anyway, <laughs> leotards. But that's a great shot, and there's our little um, uh, Planet X, or the, or the Gulala spaceship, the Gulala. That's really well done. It's kind of like the fire dragon from Destroy All Monsters. Now, like, I need a, an excuse to bring up Destroy All Monsters now, do I? All right, we got to move along here, so we're not going to keep watching this. Where are we here? As I'm trying to. Let's go up. Oh, all right. We're almost done here. Oops, come on. Planet to save Earth. But what can one creature, no matter how clever and strong, do against the hordes of salamander men, the legions of Kulamonians, now descending upon Earth? Well, Wolf, <laughs> there's the new leader, the big bad. The hell is that? Our tests have been completed. Now we are prepared to attack, so I will offer my last warning to Earth. People of Earth. He's got his own microphone. This is my final warning to you. Unless you immediately surrender to us, you shall be dead. We dead. await your surrender, Earthmen. If you fail, bears immediately, we will stop the Earth's rotation 
all of your homes, everything you have built will be destroyed. And you, Earthman, you also will perish. <laughs> Thank you. You're our only hope. Good luck. <laughs> Help us, Starman. You're our only hope. And there he goes. So he takes off and get he takes off to the south the Kulamonia Kulaman. There he. <laughs> this guy looks like he could actually uh, battle Star. No, I will save her. I'll give you a chance to go back to the planet you're from. <laughs> but the Earth soon shall be mine. When you've been destroyed, we shall take it. I'm going to show you my strength. No <laughs> well, one-on-one -on -one battle here. And they do fight while flying through the air. And at least that's why their capes are going, or whatever you call those that Starman has. Uh, guys, get to the fight scenes. There we go. I mean, they must be on some wire still because the way they're kind of... I don't think they had any uh, fight choreography here, and they just kind of winged it. Judo! Judo! Yeah, he's definitely on, on a wire. So this goes on for a little while longer, but they do win. A little further here. Now, all the remaining Kulamonians have gathered. Judo! Judo! But the cops are coming with their secret weapon. You'd think the scientists would be the ones, but it's the cops. Cheese it! It's the cops. All right. Come on, fire already. That is a skin-tight outfit, isn't it? Although, you know, Starman probably doesn't have skin like humans do. But Ken does. Look at all that smoke. I would not have wanted to be on the set when this was going on. So we're about done here. Um, let's wrap this up and we can watch the rest of the movie in peace without me jibber jabbering over it. But uh, Starman is a mighty hero and I've, um, some people have rewritten more stories about him. I kind of had one in mind, a fan fiction, of course, because I'm a fan. Look, they're all just drooly and they're dead. Due to the strength of Starman and the effective secret weapons, the Kulamonian invasion of Earth has ended, and the Salamander Oops. men have been destroyed. Boy, have they been destroyed. They're D.E.D. -E gone. So that's Attack from Space. Right? Invaders from Space. Pardon me. Attack from Space is the next one. So until our next assignment, agents, this is X7 signing off. Take it out there, kids. from the Emerald Planet has successfully carried out his mission. He begins his two-billion-mile journey home, speeded on his way by the farewells of the grateful people of Earth.